It has been far too long since I said this, but welcome back, everybody. This is Vash. And uh, we're going to talk about LogSec today. Um, I will try to make sure we have chapter marks so that you can just skip forward if you don't care about this part. But really quick, just some minor, minor housekeeping stuff here. I'm going to be working on format tweaks and things like trying to uh, get an outline in my videos, maybe even script some of them. Uh, also, maybe look at transitions between chapters and things like that better. And then also just looking for more topics to cover. I'm hoping to keep a more consistent upload rate uh, going forward here. So if there is something you think I should really cover, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments. And of course, you know, like, share, and subscribe. It's always good to um, to get that. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do if you would uh, like to keep seeing more content from me. And then um, I was also looking at potentially doing some game streaming. So if that's an interest, please let me know. But uh with that, we'll start talking about LogSec and uh, what exactly this application can do for you and why I've been really impressed with it. When I switched to Linux, one of the applications I had the most difficulty replacing was OneNote. Uh, OneNote was always the one that ultimately let me take notes in the way that I needed to take notes. Uh, some people will go and they'll create a bunch of Word documents and put them in folders. And my issue with that is ultimately, if you're unfamiliar with the notes or you're new to the area or something like that, finding those notes can be very difficult, especially if it's a file where ultimately maybe not everything is organized the way you'd expect it to be, or just maybe things are not phrased the same way that you would phrase them. So documentation was something that ultimately became really something that I was thinking about a lot. And ultimately, at my job, OneNote became the de facto note-taking application because on Windows, that was the only thing that I really found that would work and let me actually easily enter information but also find that information later on because I wouldn't always remember exactly how I phrased something, but I could usually put enough words together that I had used or if or go and make sure that I use those words and find that information afterward. But that being said, I did have some key problems with OneNote. You were limited to the OneNote format. So if Microsoft ever decides that OneNote's going to go away, then I would have to convert everything to Word documents from there and figure out what to do with my notes from there. And I'm back in that same situation. Uh, to do's, you could kind of add tasks and things like that and add checkboxes, but that was really cumbersome to do. And it also required you to go to a specific note section um, because there was no easy way to really get to all your to do's together, from what I could tell. Um, I tried various methods, I kind of played around with it. Maybe there was one, and I just, I just don't know about it, but I could not figure out a good way to do that. And then the most puzzling one of all is. Both Word and OneNote, they don't have code blocks. So if you're trying to do things like store SQLs or you know concepts of SQLs or you know Python or whatever, you can't really easily do that in OneNote or Word without some sort of add-in, um, which I did not really want to use. So I tried standard notes. I tried a simple note. I tried Joplin. They just weren't for me. They just didn't work for me. Uh, but a couple months ago, I found uh, an application called Rome Research. It is the first kind of new wave of note-taking apps that I know about. There may have been others, but that was the one I think that got big. Uh, that is a cloud version of uh, something kind of similar to this, but uh, it's really designed for collaboration and, and research and you know academic research and things like that. So... It's a new paradigm for note taking. There's a whole there's a whole lot of literature out there about that. I'm not going to get into that today because, to me, that's not important for what I, I I don't I probably don't strictly follow that method. But the idea behind it is that ultimately you're not limited to files and folders. You're not in that structure. You have a more free flowing uh, note taking experience. And you are able to link those notes together. And that is what I mean here by backlinks. So this is a page that is titled LogSec Video. 
If I scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see various backlinks where I've linked this page. So I've linked this page on the January 16, 2022 page. I've linked it on January 15, 2022, and I've linked it on a page called New Page. And um, I'm able to, if I hover over those, I can actually see what they are. If I go and click on one, I can bring that up directly. So not only am I seeing this entry right here, I'm also seeing this note under it. So if I want to create a new page and I don't actually want to add any notes to it at all, I can do it just like this. I have this page called New Area. I have not made any actual notes on the page itself. I've just linked it several different places. So you can do a lot of different things and this gives you a lot of power when it comes to actually taking and organizing all of your notes together. Um, where I really started to realize how powerful this, these backlinks rather, and these tasks together were, when I actually downloaded this on my work machine and started using this for work, they actually, they recently, then, you know, maybe a month ago, actually signed the files so that it would pass a Windows antivirus check. And when they did that, I installed it and I started using it and it really all came together on how this is supposed to work. So I have a query over here called to-do list. It's got three tasks on it right now. They are all in LogSec video. But if I come over here and I say to-do uh, new task. So I, now I've got this to-do over here. It can, it, it's just randomly out here, right? If I click to-do list. I'll see that. I'll see exactly where it is. I'll see the task. If I need to just see the list, like if I don't really care where they're from necessarily, I can do this and I can just see, hey, these are my tasks that I need to do. I On to-do task, I like to leave them open like this. Completed task, I may prefer that look. So like I have one here marked completed task. So I just have a, have a note here about explain queries. Um, so that's just marked complete. But if I come back here to my log sec video, and I click uh, show task creation. I could check that off. There are keyboard shortcuts for this, by the way. I just, I just haven't learned them all. But um, there are other actual statuses you can use. So if you hit a forward slash, you can get a lot of different autocomplete options here. Um, but the ones I wanna focus on are for task creation, and that is to do, doing, later, now, done, waiting, canceled, and you can also set a deadline schedule or you can uh, add a priority. So you can use any combination of these. Um, I tend to prefer to do doing and done, and also I use waiting sometimes or canceled. Uh, but now and later, some people prefer that. But you can set actually set the default format for this uh, in, your, in your settings if you want to. But uh, I, I just tend to stick with that. So there are a lot of other options here. I do not have time to cover them all in this video. If you see something that catches your eyes and you're, you're, you're like, uh, I'd really like to know more about that, please just feel free to comment and I will be glad to try to follow up and see if I can do something about that or at least give you an answer or maybe a link to where you can find more answers. So the other thing that I had, code snippets. I can do code just like this. A single back tick before and after would give me a, a, a look like that. If I have a more specific language, I can do triple back tick ticks the language name, um, then you do just a shift return, uh, shift return after the code, and then triple back ticks to exit the code. You can, uh, I don't know how many languages this actually supports. Um, I know Python SQL and Clojure, I believe it's called. I'm not familiar with that language, but this is, that's apparently what this is written in. And, um, but it's really nice to be able to do that. It's not necessarily, you know, needed all the time, but it's really nice that uh, it could actually, actually do that. Um, there's no telling, honestly, if this, I think this is right, but uh, anyway, there's no telling how many uh, syntax errors I may actually have in some of this. But anyway, uh, so we showed backlinks, so I'll check that off. And ultimately, I just really like the way this all flows. I can go and I, I can go up here and I can say search. And like, so say I know I, I entered a SQL, a dummy SQL here for 
customer uh, SQL, <laughs> customer name. So now SQL to find customer name. I didn't exactly remember what the name, what I had written down, but I, I remember SQL customer name, SQL to find customer name. Boom, there it is. And um, here's my link references to any to SQL. One thing I actually do a lot at work, if I hold shift and click this, I can open it up in this right pane over here. And I'll just have this sitting out open and then I'll be, you know, kind of working in the main pane. So I can go and click here and I can go into, you know, this video, log sick video and look through here. So the other really cool thing about LogSec and Obsidian as well, which we'll probably talk about in the next video or the one after that, is that these files are in the markdown format. So these are all just text files. If I go to settings here, go to editor, you'll see preferred file format is markdown. With LogSec in particular, I actually have the option to do org files if I really want to. So two really nice text editing formats that you can do. Um, if you need to take these files and do something else, you could do that. Some people actually use Obsidian and LogSec together. Um, there are there are some differences, but ultimately, like people have gotten them to cooperate together. But I just really, like I say, this all just works for me. This connects and works in the way my mind works. And if I've got all this, you know, as I add more and more to this, if I click graph view here. It actually shows me where my ideas are connected. So notice here that I'm connecting LogSec video to new page to a new page to new area. So maybe there's a connection between new area and LogSec video. Obviously, these are just, you know, some of this is just dummy stuff that I've made for this video. But as you build and add more to this knowledge base, this can become very powerful and actually potentially link ideas that you may have not thought about otherwise. Um, it also is just really nice to just see kind of where ideas may intersect that you may not even think about. So it's, like I say, ultimately to me, it just makes a whole lot of sense. I've been really impressed with this application. Uh, it is still relatively early in development. Like there are, there are still things that it can do, but I mean, I have had it be pretty stable. Uh, I have not really had any issues with it doing anything weird. I mean, my experience so far has been very good. And, um, like I say, if you have any further questions or have any more specific things you want to ask about, feel free. There are There is a lot that I am not really even scratching the surface on myself, much less that I can do in this quick of a video. So I hope you enjoyed and have a great day, everyone.